right. Thank you very much. Yes, today we're going to talk about Edgar Casey. Now, for me, this has been a real journey because um, about three years ago, I got a home in Virginia Beach. And of course, Virginia Beach is the head of the Casey Center, ARE. And um, I started going there and being part of their study groups and becoming interested in the Casey readings and doing a lot of readings on them. I became particularly interested because the first couple of readings I found um, on the Casey work said, don't do spiritualism. And he was like, not spiritualism. You can do study spiritual things, but not spiritualism. So I was like, hmm, why is he saying not spiritualism? So I became very interested in Casey's concept of psychic. What did he mean by psychic? How it was compared to what I knew from SNU and all of my spiritualist teachings. So this is what I have been doing definitely over the past year. I have been studying the differences and similarities between the Casey writings and um, spiritualism. Who is Edgar Casey? Many of you may have heard about Edgar Casey um, before. He was known as the sleeping prophet. He gave numerous psychic readings about how to develop an individual's psychic skills. He was also very, very well known for his medical diagnosis that he did for uh, many, many people. He gave them homeopathic and different treatments to ail all kinds of ailments. Um, is the most documented psychic of all time. And we say that because had thousands and thousands and thousands of readings and all of them were documented. They're all documented. They're all in the Casey Center in Virginia Beach. They're all online. Once you become a member of the Casey organization, you can research and read all of his readings. You have access to all of it. So they're very available. They also have made up books on different topics that he talked about that you can take out of the Edgar Casey Library. So there's many, many ways to access his readings today. Casey was interested in consciousness by developing the mental or physical mind toward the uplift or mankind towards the maker, leaving those things behind that so easily beset the physical body by the training of the mental through physical force the subconscious urge, as we have given, the faculty of doing in the right or direct way and lending assistance to the upliftment of all. Now his language is a bit biblical, it's a bit archaic. So what was he saying? He was saying by developing our mental or physical mind to uplift it towards the God force, the universal consciousness, and by leaving behind those physical ideas and things that cloud our, our mind so often, we can train the mental um, to be able to open up subconscious urges and able to ourselves to be able to train our minds to tap into the God force and to tap into the enlightenment in the universe, I don't know if you want to call it God, whatever people want to call it, in, infinite intelligence, God, whatever it is. He very much believed in God. He very much believed in the Bible. And um, although his teachings differ from, from Christi, Christian teachings in some ways, which, which I will explain, but he um, definitely was very, very religious. He believed that we as individuals had to develop our own personal spirituality. And through our own personal spirituality, we could get a direct connection or get direct messages from the God consciousness. Um, and we could use that information to help ourselves and help those other people around you. So his work is very much into service. It's very mm -hmm. much into self healing, and very much into positive healing of other people. These were things that, that his psychic development was all about. 
He very much believed that thoughts were things and that our thoughts um, were very important and that our thoughts really directed us in many different ways and that the thoughts and the consciousness could guide us towards spiritual guidance and the impressions could be given by entities entering the subconscious mind and the subconscious messages can come through our subconsciousness. So um, he did believe in these different levels of consciousness. He himself, when he went into, they called it sleeping. They don't call it trance, uh, what he did. They said he'd go to sleep. But in, what we would call it in spiritualism, we would say he did go into a deep trance state. And when he went into a deep trance state, he was able to reach and achieve the Akashic Records. Now, the way I have to view the Akashic Records is the Akashic Records are not exactly the same level as um, our deceased loved ones are. It's a little higher or different level. And through the Akashic Records, he was able to access the past lives and all the information about an individual. So during his readings, many times, he would tell people who in their current life they had spent past lives with. And he gave great detail about life in Egypt, life in Atlantis, a little bit about life in Lumeria, and all of these places. So by going through the various readings, people have called this information and written other books about these topics based on his, his lectures. So he very much believed in past lives. That was very much in reincarnation, and that was very much a part of the readings that he gave to people. So that's one reason why the Casey people do so much of that past life regression. He said that psychic means of the spirit or soul. It's the cooperation of the individual or through the individual from whom such phenomena or such phases of the working of the spirit and soul to bring the actions of these to the physical plane. So what he's basically saying here, translated, is that we all have the psychic ability to be able to access this information. And we as receptacles, as receivers of this information, are able to share it with other people on, on the earth plane. So he very much believed in developing oneself psychically. And that's a lot of what the Casey study groups are about, is how do you do that? Now, he didn't really give a straight answer, you know, sit down and say six Hail Marys and do this or that and the other thing, and you'll develop your psychic skills. Instead, he gave lessons. And the lessons he did... One of them was in 12 steps for people to think about how they could reflect within themselves to develop a better psychic ability. And those reflections are things like getting an ideal. What is your spiritual ideal? And I mean, and that's a question I ask people all the time. They come to me, they want to do trance. I say, why do you want to do trance? You know, what is the reason for it? So what is your ideal? What is it you are striving for? What is it your, that's your goal in it? You have to be open to the spirit world to be able to accept these messages and take them in. So all of these things are very, very important. You have to believe in God. You have to believe in a higher consciousness. You have to have faith. Um, and you develop this within yourself first and you look within yourself before you go out and you find a spirit God or you find some other things. And I guess a good point to make at this, at this stage is that there's a very interesting interaction between Edgar Casey and the medium Eileen Garrett. Now, many of you know the name Eileen Garrett. And what they did, which was, it was interesting, was Casey went into his sleep state and Eileen Garrett went into her trance state, and the two of them had a conversation. And in the conversation, many of the similarities and differences between what she was doing um, 
as a spiritualist contacting her spirit guide to get information and what Casey was doing came out. For example, Casey did not go to spirit guides. Casey did not directly go and contact relatives, although there were some readings where relatives did come through and did come, come in and around, and he was aware of them. And he was also aware of some other spirits that gave him some guidance as well. But he didn't, he didn't like go through a spirit guide like Eileen did. Eileen depended on her spirit guide to get her spirit information. He went directly to the Akashic Records, directly to the source of all of the spiritual information to get his, his information. The interesting thing that he said to Eileen, and I have to say this about the readings because they drive me a little crazy and sometimes I do a reading, I think I really understand the reading. I go back a month later, I reread it for something, totally different interpretation. You can interpret these things in so many different ways, which is why there are so many study groups talking about the information because people are trying to sift through it and, and really try to understand the ideas he was presenting. One of the ideas that was the most important for me that he told Eileen Garrett, and I have to find it again, was he said, look to the living, not to the dead. Which to me meant that instead of just focusing on giving evidence of proof of the continuity of life, by going and getting our deceased relatives and bringing back the information for them, look to life itself. Look to how this psychic energy can be used within your life and how it can be used to improve the life of those around you. So he looked at it very much as a living thing, which has totally changed my kind of focus on psychic um, development because I'm looking towards life. I'm looking towards higher levels of spiritual understanding. And his ideas about psychic also explain to us why there's angel communication, why there's spirit God communication, why there's, why there's even communication with spirits that may not be from this planet. Because Casey believed that our souls did travel to other planets as well as stay on this planet. In between lives, he said people would go to Saturn or Neptune for certain types of teachings and then come back. So his idea of souls and our soul energy and the energy that can exist within the galaxy or the cosmos, the consciousness of all, is very broad very broad in many, many ways. And um, it's detailed too. I mean, if you go, you have to go through the readings and, and kind of parse the stuff out of it, but he's got a lot of detail on all of these subjects, which are subjects that spiritualism hasn't really touched upon in many ways. Uh, that's not to knock spiritualism. I mean, I totally believe in spiritualism and everything the SNU and them are doing. It's just what Casey's doing is different. So I look at the two of them as, as very diff in very different ways. So when I'm training somebody to do the Casey work, I'm really focusing on that individual and saying to that individual, you need to look at yourself as a vessel. You need to look at yourself as a channel that's receiving the psychic information and able to share it. Where in, if I'm working with someone who's doing mediumship, I'm saying, okay, we need to get in touch with that spirit link bring that information back and demonstrate clearly that you have a communication with the spirit world, with this deceased loved one or this deceased person. So the two things are very, very different. Casey wanted very much, everything he did was to help the individual, was to try to get the individual to be healthier, to get the individual to have better relationships with people in their life, to get them to understand why certain things may be going on within their life at this time. Casey also believed very much in personal responsibility. Personal responsibility, which um, is very big in, in spiritualism. Um, we have our principles. Casey, although it's not written out in principles, 
there are all of these principles that that Casey has for living, a, you know, a good life, being kind, being considerate, um, caring for others. These are all things that are very important to the Casey work, just as they are to spiritualism. Personal responsibility. I haven't heard him say personal responsibility per se, but he said you need to have personal responsibility in your thought. He really emphasized how important your thoughts are and the positivity of your thoughts and how you think. He also emphasized positivity in health and believed that you can control the health and the things that go on in your health as well. So those were two very important things. I can give a personal case study of Casey's work in MS because I did get very involved with it and I read all of, just about all of his passages on the illness MS and all of the remedies that he had suggested for people. And I decided to put them to practice in my own life because I have MS and it changed my life completely. It totally helped the condition. The first thing was diet. Um, the diet is one where you don't have sugar. You don't have caffeine. Um, you're not supposed to have alcohol. I've cheated on that one a little bit, but, um, you can't, I don't have any alcohol before I'm doing any mediumship work. And I don't have any alcohol before I'm doing any of my Casey treatments. In addition to the diet, you have to um, have, it's, he does, she has two devices. One of them that I use is the wet cell battery. It's a battery device. You mix up the chemicals, you put them in this big jug and you place um, the instruments on two parts of your body. Now, the, the liquid that's going through the battery that comes into my body has gold in it. He says that one of the things people with MS are missing is gold. So he gives us gold. I get a gold infusion with this. Um, I don't feel a lot. I mean, I do like to do it with meditation. He suggested you have good thoughts when you do it. I always do relax when I'm taking these. But I can feel I can feel a little bit of a charge going through my body. It's interesting. The battery doesn't have an on-off switch. It's just these two. If you do one in the front of you and one in the back of you, you just place it in these two positions and you let the battery do its work through you. Um, afterwards, you have to do some kind of a massage to get the muscles and things moving. So I've been doing this now for a month and a half and. Um, I have not had an episode. I've been better. I, my thoughts are much clearer. I'm able to work better. So I can say that for me, it has definitely worked. Um, and so people do study what he said about different illnesses and do try to follow the other things he said. I mean, part of it too with the diet was that I have to eat leafy green. I have salad every day, every day. And then you put a little bit of gelatin on the salad. Um, I make my own jello now. Um, and it's been amazing how many sugar free things I've been able to find, but the diet really, really helps. If I go off the diet, which I did the other day with a cookie, I started to get a headache. So I can definitely feel the difference when I'm doing it and when I'm not. A lot of people couldn't do the types of things he said to do. Um, so they didn't improve, but those who did follow his instructions pretty much to the letter saw improvement whatever, with whatever physical condition they had. So I'm a testimonial that it does work. It does work. So I will continue, continue to do it. So his health readings are very, very important. But for me, I'm mostly focusing on the psychic stuff and trying to develop different teaching exercises that fit within the KC framework of how he taught and how he did things. And it's subtle. I mean, it's a subtle change for me instead of, you know, asking for my spirit guides, helpers and teachers to come through like I do when I'm doing um, mediumship work. I have to say, please make me a vessel, vessel for your um, messages. 
and enable me to be able to to do this work. So it's a much more humbling type of of effect than than if you're doing, I think, mediumship. Because I think a lot of mediums, they say, oh, look at this, I got this message and that message, and, and there's an ego aspect to it. But with the Casey work, you got to get rid of the ego. you got to get rid of the ego. you got to really humble yourself and really think about others and think about using your psychic gifts not as a way to make money or not as a way to impress people, but as a way to help others and be of service. And that aspect of the work is totally similar to spiritualism. Casey's healing and spiritualist healing are I, pretty much identical. Uh, when I say that, the Casey group has a group called the Glad Helpers. I'm hoping to join them in the fall when I go back. With the Glad Helpers, what they do is they meet once a week. They have... Um, they study some of the meditation material. He very much believes in meditation. Meditation is a very important part of trying to develop your psychic skills. And so they do a bit of meditation. They do a bit of studying and reading of the KC work. Then they have these prayer lists. And the prayer lists are the most detailed prayer lists uh, I've seen in any church anywhere because the spiritualists do the same thing. The KC prayer list pray for everyone. They pray for people who've asked them to pray for them. They pray for people that they know who need prayers. They pray for every single country in the world during these sessions. And they do that afterwards. They do hands-on type of healing, similar, just like spiritualist healing. They don't touch. They just do it above the body, where on spiritualism, we will usually touch the shoulders. They don't touch but it's the same thing. It's the spiritual healing they do, the healing on the individuals in the room. So it's, it's about a two-hour service that they do of prayers every week. And there's a couple of groups that, groups that do that. So it's the same in the spiritualist churches. We have our prayer lists. We say the names of everybody on the prayer list. We do our hands-on healing. So it's pretty much identical. Um, on, on that level. And a lot of people forget the importance of healing in the spiritualist work because the healing work is just as important as the mediumship work. And um, in sometimes it's more important because you're helping people as much as you can. So that, the, the, that part of both are the same. It's pretty much the same. I don't see much of a difference. It's just the approach to the psychic work is different because spiritualism wants to prove the continuity of life that's the whole mission of spiritualism where casey wants to develop a greater ability for the individual to communicate with god to go, to communicate with the god forces with the god elements and we know when we look back through history there were times in human history where the human mind was able to connect to those god voices and elements much more clearly than we are today. So that's what he's trying to bring us back to. So all of that intuitiveness, all of those people who say they hear angels and get guidance from all of that, the Casey work explains that because that's what happens when you raise your vibration and you can get up to a level where you can hear those voices. You can receive that information directly. You don't need to go through a medium. You don't need to go through somebody else. It's your own personal um, agenda that you do and your own personal growth into spirituality. And that's what Casey was interested in, people's individual growth. For himself, he was very much tied into the Bible. He read the Bible every single year. He knew all kinds of Bible stories. He taught Sunday school for various churches at times. Um, but I think there was a little bit of a difference because obviously many of the Christian churches do not like mediumship and do not like um, this type of spirit communication because they don't understand it. You know, But he did. They told him to stop doing as many readings as he was doing, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't stop. 
And that's one reason why he died a little bit younger than he should have, um, was because he kept doing it. And I mean, people would send him letters from all over the place. And it used to be like $5 a reading. The man was poor. Throughout his life, he was poor. He never had money. Um, his organizations would be up and down. It was never fully successful. He had a lot of support from wealthy people at various times. But he himself, there were many, many times where he and his, and his wife and the family didn't know where the next meal was coming from. So he himself was a very humble person and, and not, did not make money off of this skill. He just barely made it alive. His goal was the hospital. So today there is no Casey Hospital. There are doctors that do look at the Casey work. Neil Zipkowski, who we know from physical mediumship, is one of those doctors that also is into the Casey medical treatments and things. And um, he might talk, come and talk about it sometime. But doctors are looking at it, and certain people are looking at it. And um, unfortunately, there was not a lot of money to do the research required to prove that a lot of this, his things worked. But the people who used them found that, that it did help them a lot in the work. And I'm just about ready for questions of people. All I can say is that for me, it's been, it's been life-changing getting involved with the work. I am involved in three, I'm in two study groups right now. When I'm back in Virginia, I'm in, in four. And I will be joining the GLAD helpers so that I can do the hands-on healing. And I am trying to get into their lecture program so that I can lecture about the Casey ideas.